looking like the monkey looks straight to me. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا اللهم زدنا علما إنك أنت عليم حكيم اللهم اجعل هذه المحاضرة حجة لنا لا حجة علينا يا رب العالمين أما بعد uh, we start off, actually we skipped a couple uh, parts we want to pick up in Zab al-Mustaqnia. Bab Salatul Jum'ah. Bab Salatul Jum'ah. Zab al-Mustaqnia, once again, is the fiqh of Imam Ahmed ibn Hamdul Rahimah Allah Ta'ala. He died in the year 241 Hijri. Uh, this book was compiled by Abu Naja Musa al Hajjawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He died in the year. Does anyone know? Come back later, inshallah. Yeah. Bab Salatul Jum'ah. The chapter of Salatul Jum'ah. What is Salatul Jum'ah? قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى تلزموا كل ذكر حر مكلف مسلما so the shaykh رحمه الله تعالى he starts off by saying that salatul jumu'ah is incumbent upon كل ذكر is incumbent upon كل ذكر this here means that it is incumbent upon every male hurran that is free mukallafan that means that they reach the age of islamic puberty musliman and they also must be muslim so the shaykh rahimahullah he starts off the chapter of salatul jumu'ah by first mentioning the conditions of the one who must attend Salatul Jumu'ah. So he says, tell Zamu, it is obligatory huh? or necessary. A Jumu'ah is incumbent upon kulli dhakarin, every male, hurrin, every free male, mukallafin, every free male that have reached Islamic puberty. Muslim and they must be Muslim. So every Muslim male that have reached the age of Islamic puberty, Mustotanin, and that they must be Muqeen, meaning that they are not travelers. That the man who is obligated to pray Salatul Jumu'ah, they must fulfill those requirements. And one of them is that they are Mustotan, meaning that they are Muqeen, that they live in that particular place, Bibina'in. That they live in one place. 
even if it was separated. So for example, if you lived in West Philly, West Philadelphia has different parts to it. Even if you lived in different parts of West Philly, as long as you lived in that particular location or area. Laysa, also in addition to that, there are more conditions. Laysa bayna hu wa bayna al-masjidi akthuru min farsakhin. That is not between him and the masjid more than three miles. More than three miles. And it says, wala tajibu. So now we're going to learn that. Salatul Jumu'ah is incumbent. And this is according to the fiqh Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal because you're going to hear some things that you never heard before. It doesn't mean that it's the majority position, but rather it's the position that uh, Imam Ahmed uses in the method of Imam Ahmed. Ta'ala. And also, it's also important to note that when people say madhabs, uh, we find that the fuqaha al arba, meaning Imam Abi Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam al Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala. When they say they follow a particular madhab, it doesn't necessarily mean that you blind follow a particular sheikh or scholar in that madhab. La. What's understood by following a madhab is that you follow their usul, meaning that you follow their usul al fiqh, meaning how they extract rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah. There's a strategy to it. And each madhab has their own particular strategy. None of them differ with regards to the Quran, the Sunnah, Ijma, and what? And Al Qiyas in general. None of them disagree with using those four components. Whereas the difference of opinion comes and what goes what comes after that. So for example, uh, some of the schools may use a shar min qablina, meaning they may use the Islam if you don't find something in the Quran, Sunnah. Ijma' and uh, Qiyas and Analytical deduction Then they'll use something else called what? A shara' min qablina For example they will use the legislation That came before this particular period For example The time of Yusuf alayhi salam He was a wazir He was a, a member of the government During the time of his, in his uh, During the time of Yusuf alayhi salam And so they will look at other prophets in the past And use rulings during their time to also come up with rulings in Islam today. This is also uh, a dalil, if you will. This is what some of the ulama use as dalil. Um, likewise, after that, you might have, from, for example, the fiqh of Imam Malik, they may have Amalu Ahl Medina, the actions of the people of Medina that might take precedence over something else. Huh? So when a person say that they follow a particular madhab, this means that they follow a particular pathway in extracting rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah. It doesn't mean that they don't follow Quran and the Sunnah. Not. Rather, it means that they follow a particular strategy in extracting rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah. Thank you. So as it, as it relates to Imam Ahmed, it says, Every male, hurrin, that is free, mukallifin, that has reached the age of Islamic discernment, Muslim and they must be Muslim, Mustotanin, and they must live in that particular town. Huh? Then Salatul Jumu'ah is incumbent for them. So now we're going to learn who is Salatul Jumu'ah not obligatory on or not incumbent upon. And he says, Rahimahullah, Wala tajibu ala musafirin, safara qasrin. That if a person is traveling, if a person is a traveler, then Salatul Jumu'ah is not incumbent for him. But it's not just any travel. The type of travel that is considered qasran, meaning with this type of with this type of travel, you will shorten your salat. You will shorten your salat. So let's say for example, we were traveling from Philadelphia huh, to New York. Philadelphia, for example, to New York. Right now, we're in New York on Yom Al-Jumu'ah. Do we fulfill the requirements to pray Salat Al-Jumu'ah? Meaning, it being obligatory upon us? Huh? No. Why not? I said because we're traveling. We're traveling and that our Salat can be shortened. 
Therefore, we are not, or the Salatul Jumu'ah is not obligated for us to pray. Now, on it, this book was written. Zad al Mustaqnet was put together many, many years ago. And during that time, there were slaves. And so, in that, they mentioned that La Abdin, meaning that um, if you were a slave, then it was not obligatory for them to pray the Salah. Wa Imra'atan, and it also is not obligatory for the women to pray Salatul Jum'ah. And then he says, Rahimahullah, Wa man hadaraha minhum ajza'athu. However, if any of those people, for example, the traveler, the slave, or the woman, if they were to attend Salatul Jum'ah, ajza'athum, meaning it will suffice them. Meaning that they don't have to pray Salatul Duhur. Meaning that Salatul Duhur is not obligated upon them. وَلَمْ تَنَعَقِدْ bi. However, with those groups of people, they do not count towards the number of people that is obligated to pray or to establish Salatul Jum'ah according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And what that means is, we're going to get into this a little later, that in order to establish a Jumu'ah according to the fiqh of Imam Ahmed, then there are other positions, but this is according to the Musannif, the author here, he mentioned that in order for there to be an establishment of Salatul Jumu'ah, there must be at least 40 people. There must be at least 40 people to establish Salatul Jumu'ah. Now, if we were to implement that here in America, some masajid do not get 40 people for Jumu'ah. Huh? And some areas will not have Jumu'ah if we were to uh, go with that position here. However, this is the position of the madhab is that it must be 40 people. And what he's saying is that وَلَمْ تَنْعَقِدْ bi That if we have from the 40 people, let's say 10 people are not from the area, not from the, the city, they're travelers. And then we have another 15 people that are women. So we have what, 25 people, huh? 25 of the 40 are not it's not obligatory for them to pray Jumu'ah. So according to the method here, then Salatul Jumu'ah will not be established. The Salatul Jumu'ah will not be established. Obviously, it's not the position that we that we practice here. However, this is the position that is from the method that is known. And in addition to that, وَلَا يُسِحْ أَنْ يَأُمَّهْ فِيهَا And that is not permissible or is not correct for a traveler or any of those people to lead Salatul Jum'ah, lead the Salat in Salatul Jum'ah. Neither one of them should be able to lead the Salat from Salatul Jum'ah. Is that clear? Right. The next part, it says, وَمَنْ سَقَتَتْ عَنْهُ لِعُذْرٍ Let's say, for example, we have a person that Jum'ah is obligatory from the prayer. What's an example of a person that Jum'ah is obligatory from the prayer? Like a we just mentioned a whole bunch of people. A same person? Yes. That's a person that is mukallim. We mentioned that. What else? Ahsan. Any Muslim man that lives in a particular town and they reach the age of Islamic puberty and they are not traveling, then Salatul Jumu'ah is obligatory for them or is incumbent upon them. And it says, So men saqatat anhu li udrin. However, whoever is not able to pray Jumu'ah for whatever legislative excuse that they may have. Whatever legislative excuse that they may have. Like being sick or fear. Huh? If a person is afraid or they're sick or what have you, then in this case, the Jumu'ah is not legislated for them. However, it well, not that it's not legislated. It's legislated, but they have an excuse. They have a other. They have an excuse. For men, for men, sakatat anhu the other in wajabat alay one akat b. So let's say, for example, Sheikh, you're sick. You can't go to Jumu'ah that day, right? You can't go to Jumu'ah that day. You don't feel well, or you're afraid that you're gonna something's gonna happen to you or your family if you leave the house to go to Jumu'ah. 
But you say, you know what, I'm going to go anyway. Does that Jumu'ah count for this person? That's the issue. Yes, it does. Uh, even though he has an excuse not to attend Jumu'ah, but if he goes, he can also count from among the attendees. He can count from among the attendees. Now, now, further. Certain circumstances, like is that one of the situations though where, where it's frowned upon or it's hated that they do that? Like you know, like when we say you're traveling and you and you fast, it's like you you shouldn't take the fast. What do you mean? Like, is it frowned upon to leave off Juma? No, that, like like if you have an excuse. If you have an excuse, class. Right, but you still, frowned upon by who? Who's gonna frown on you? You have an excuse. You have a legislative excuse. Right, but you know, like if you travel, right? And you, and you fast, and you don't have to fast if you travel. Right. But you do anyway. But it's, it's said that you should take the fast and not fast. Well, so if you recall, um, during the month of Ramadan, we covered some ahadith of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. They said when they would travel, لا يعيبوا صائم على مفتري ولا مفتروا على صائمي. And Nabi Ali Salatu Salam he said in this hadith that when they were traveling, he would, did not find any of the ones that were fasting looking down on the ones that didn't fast. And the ones that didn't fast weren't looking down on the ones that fasted. So we're going to make the Prophet والسلام, our measuring stick and his companions, not our people. Huh? So according to the Prophet والسلام, and his companions, they didn't look down on one another. In this case here, there's a legislative excuse. You're sick. How can, he, how can it be looked down upon if we don't find the companions? Already Allah Ta'ala, I know when the Prophet والسلام, looking down on people. Huh? In the next issue, it says, وَمَنْ صَلَّى الظُّهْرَ مِمَّنْ عَلَيْهِ حُدُورُ الْجُمْعَةِ قَبْلَ الْإِمَامِ صَلَاةَ قَبْلَ الصَّلَاةَ الْإِمَامِ لَمْ تَصِحْ So here we have another issue. Let's say, for example, a person, for whatever reason, let's say he's working. And let's say whatever he's doing, he did not go to Jumu'ah on Friday. Right? What time do we pray to my? 1.30 What time does Dohar come in? 102, one, like that right. So this brother, he has in his mind that I'm not going to Jumu'ah this day For whatever reason, whatever the case may be He's not going to Jumu'ah that day So when Dohar comes in He decides to pray Dohar before Salatul Jumu'ah is even prayed. In this case, Salatul Lam Tasih. His Salah is not correct. If a person prays Salatul Jumu'ah, if a person prays Salatul Duhr, when they're supposed to be in the masjid, we're not talking about a traveler, huh? we're not talking about a woman, we're not talking about people that did not reach the age of puberty. We're talking about a man who is obligated for him to pray Salatul Jumu'ah. And he does not pray Salatul Jumu'ah and he's home, meaning he's not traveling and he's not sick, etc. Huh? He's not traveling or anything like that. He decides to pray Salatul Dhuhr before people pray Salatul Jumu'ah. They say in this case, Salatul Lam Tasih. That is, Salah is not correct. That is salat. His salat al duhur is not correct. His salat al duhur is not correct. Tayyib. Wa tasihu mimman la tajibu alayhi. However, if they were to pray salat al duhur, but the salat is not obligated for them, let's say, for example, a person is traveling from out of town. Huh? A person might be sick because he has a legislative excuse. He prays at 12 or 1 o'clock. A person is traveling, a woman, huh? Salat al Dhuhr comes in at 1 o'clock, she plays at 1 o'clock on Friday. She's not going to Jumu'ah and it's not, it's not obligated for her to attend Salat al Jumu'ah. So in this case, she gets a pass, or they all get a pass. And he says, Rahimahullah, wal afdalu hatta yusalli al imam, wa la yajuzu liman talzim al wasafru fi yawmiha ba'd al zawal. It's better for this person to pray their Salat al Dhuhr after they pray Salat al Jumu'ah. After they pray Salat al Jumu'ah. And then he says, Rahimahullah, Wala yujuzu li man tazamahu al safru fi yomiha ba'da zawah. Also, 
it is not not permissible for a person who intends to travel that they travel during the time of Jumu'ah. We're talking. We're not talking about a traveler. We're talking about a person that is muqeen. Let's say, for example, we all live in this neighborhood. We all live in this city. It's on Friday. It's one o'clock. Huh? One ten. One fifteen. Jumu'ah is at one fifteen. At one thirty, we say, "All right, we want to start our travels now." Lem lem yisah. It's not permissible. It's not permissible to travel during the time of Jumu'ah if you are. A person that lives in that town. We're not talking about a person that is already traveling. That person is not is not included in this. Is not included in this. Rather, he should wait until after Jumu'ah. After Jumu'ah, inshallah ta'ala. Tayyip, are we clear on this? Any ashkal? Any questions? Huh? Because now we're going to get into some of the conditions of Salatul Jumu'ah. Some additional conditions. Wafi Sharu Sihatul Jumu'ah. We're going to get into the conditions of that which makes your Jumu'ah correct. We're going to get into the condition. We're going to get into the conditions of the things that will make your Jumu'ah correct. So he says, Rahimahullah. يُشْتَرَطُ لِسِحَتِهَا شُرُوطٌ لَيْسَ مِنْهَا إِذْنُ إِمَامٌ So from the, from the conditions of the Jumu'ah, one of them that is, from not, that is not from the conditions is the permission of the Imam to establish Jumu'ah. The Imam here is not talking about the Imam of the Masjid. Rather, this is talking about the leadership of that town or the government, the local government in that town. That's what it means here by imam, um, the Muslim leader or Muslim government in that particular town. So the first condition is ahaduha al-waqt. The first condition is the time. The first condition for Salatul Jumu'ah is the time. So what time? Does anyone know what time Salatul Jumu'ah starts? 1.30? What time does it actually come in? When can you pray Salatul Jumu'ah? What's the earliest you can pray it and the latest you can pray it? Before Asr. Yes, what's the earliest time you can pray Salatul, uh, Salatul Jumu'ah? What's the earliest time? Before coming? What's the earliest time we can pray Salatul Jumu'ah? What's the earliest time we can pray Salatul Jumu'ah? Yalla Bismillah. Huh? Tayyip. The earliest time we can pray Salatul Jumu'ah, Awwalu, Awwalu, Awwalu Waq Salatul Eid. The time that you pray Salatul Eid is the earliest time you can pray Salatul Jumu'ah. This is the earliest time you can pray Salatul Jumu'ah. And the last time you can pray Salatul Jumu'ah, Salatul The last time where a person can pray Salatul Dhuhr, meaning towards the end of Salatul Dhuhr. So, Salatul Jumu'ah is from the time of Salatul Eid, meaning after the sunset, uh, after the sun rises, huh? up until when? Towards the end of Salatul Dhuhr. This is the time for Salatul Jumu'ah. However, most people do not pray it during that time. However, this is no doubt from the times of Salatul Jumu'ah. فَإِنْ خَرَجَ وَقْتُهَا قَبْلَ تَحْرِيمَةِ صَلُّوا ظُهْرًا So what happens now if a person is rushing to go pray Salatul Jumu'ah and the time runs out? So it says, فَإِنْ خَرَجَ وَقْتُهَا so let's say Salatul Jumu'ah goes out before you make tahrim al ihram. What do you do in this case? Let's say, for example, they pray Jumu'ah the last possible time of the day. And you're racing to get to the masjid to pray Jumu'ah. And as soon as you get there, collapse. 
Juma is over before you, meaning the time for Salatul Juma goes out before you say Allah Akbar. What do you do? Offer up Dhuhr. I said you pray Salatul Dhuhr. Wa illa Juma fa Juma. And if you make it, if you make the takbir inside of the time of Salatul Juma, then you and you're in the Salatul Juma, then you have Salatul Salatul Juma. Uh, you'll find this time of year there's a big gap, but in the winter time. Juma and Asr is very close. You might finish Juma and Asr be right in. Ashaat al Thani, the next condition for Salatul Juma, according to the fiqh of Imam Ahmed, is Hudul Arbaeen min Ahlu Wajubiha. That there must be 40, at least 40 men from that particular town that Juma is obligated for them to pray. 40 men. Well, they. الشرط الثالث The third condition أن يكونوا بقرية مستوطن مستوطن مستوطنين مستوطن 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 huh? You have to be from that particular town and you must live in that town So then we have three conditions so far The time A particular number 40 And the people must live there They must live in that particular town what the Sihu Fima Karab al Bunyan Mira Sahra'i Fa in Nakasu Kabla Itmamiha is Statnifu or Statnefu Dohra. Also, Salatul Juma is also if it's, it's also correct if it's prayed close to the desert as well. If it's close to a, the city and it's prayed in the desert. Fa in Nakasu Kabla Itmamiha it's is Statnefu. Let's say, for example, we have 40 people, right? 40 men from that particular town. Allahu Akbar, everyone starts praying. And then three people slot off, say, you know what, I'm leaving. For whatever reason, they, they leave off the slot, three people. Now we have 37. They say, in this case, if you're praying Salatul Jumai, you find that the number goes under 40. After you finish praying, they say, Yastatnisu, meaning you start the Salat over again, you pray Salatul Duhur. You start the salah over again and you pray salat al Obviously, obviously, this position uh, of the 40 is not one that is widespread here in America. And just from the bab of masalih or maslaha, uh, that this position may not be the best position uh, for the people where we live. Uh, because anytime you can leave to pray Jumu'ah, then this is something that the people should do. And perhaps you might live in an area where there are not even 40 Muslims. Uh, but they have the opportunity to pray Jumu'ah, then they should establish it, inshallah, and Allah knows best. Now, now. Is there even, once you talk deal and in, you still got 40 once you talk deal. Yes, let's, so let's say you make takbir and you start praying, right? Let's say you, while you're praying, three or four people slot off. After you finish praying, you realize, man, we only had 37 people. It's stuck in the food. Then you pray again until I put the now, hold on. Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about that though. But yes, no, we're talking about two. What are we talk? What are you talking like, about? Once you uh, take them for uh, slot two, I mean, uh, Jumu'ah, right? Uh huh. Then yeah, you court it. You said the premise of like you, you like, like, catch, like person, if you came late. Like, so what if we're talking, that's not the case here. We're talking about people who started Salatul Jumu'ah, let's say it was 40, and they, for whatever reason, they left off the Salat and left. Right. Now you have 37 people. They don't still get that Salat, they didn't finish it. That's, that's the issue. The only time you get that Salat when you say Takbir is when you finish the Salat. All right, so listen, let me tell you that when people remain, they have to. Yes, but this is according to the school of Imam Ahmed. This is not, yani, this may not be the, Majority position here, right? We just we just read it through the text. That's it. So you may even hear if you ever uh, talk to some of the ulama, particularly some of the ulama in Saudi Arabia. If this issue ever comes up, if you ever happen to call some of the scholars about Jumu'ah, uh, nine out of ten of the ulama there will mention this here: the adad arba'in that it must be forty people to establish the Jumu'ah. 9 out of 10, um, this is because a majority of the ulama in Saudi Arabia are from the Hanabila, 
majority of the ulama there are, they, they studied the Hanabil of the Fiqh Imam Ahmed. And so they're going to tell you this right here, exactly what I'm saying. Huh? However, this may not be the majority position, uh, particularly uh, where we live. Uh, and it's some room there. Yeah. It's not. This is not an issue of the, that is mujma'alay that all of the ulama from the Sahaba on down agree with that particular position of forty people. Now, wa ma adraka mal imam minha rakatan atamuha jumu'ah. This is your issue. Whoever, let's say for example, you come to jumu'ah and they're already praying. The imam he just got finished praying the first rakah and they stood up for the second rakah. And you happen to join in during the second rakah, and you catch the second rakah, then you have caught the jumu'ah. Then you have caught the jumu'ah. طيب ومن أدرك أقل من ذلك أتمها أتمها ظهرا إذا كان نوى ظهرا. In this case, let's say for example, you come in, you catch the second rakah, Allahu Akbar, and they go down into rukur, they come up, they go into sujud. And when that happens, another brother walks in. Huh? And he doesn't catch the raka'ah. They say in this case, whoever catches less than a raka'ah for Salatul Jum'ah, then they have to attend Muhad Dhuhran. Then they have to make their intentions to pray Dhuhran. They have to make their intention to pray Dhuhran. Tayyip. Tayyip. And the next issue, al-shart al-rabi', the fourth condition for Salatul Jumu'ah, yushtaratu taqaddam or taqaddamu khutbatain. That there must be two khutbas for Salatul Jumu'ah. How many khutbas? Two. So this is primarily for the khatib, the one that is giving the khutbah, or the one that is uh, leading the Jumu'ah prayer. It says, وَمَنْ شَرْتْ سِحَّتِهِمَا From the conditions of both of the khutbas being correct, there are some conditions. Condition number one, they must praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say alhamdulillah, at least. They also must send a salat ala rasulihi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's say for example, they start off by saying, in alhamdulillah, and then after that they say, wa sallallahu ala nabi, for example. So they praise Allah, they, huh, they send salutations upon the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, وَقِرَاءَةُ آيَةٍ And they mention one ayah. And then they advise وَصِيَّةُ بِتَّقْوَ اللَّهِ And they tell the people to fear Allah. وَحُضُورُ الْعَدِدِ الْمَشْرُوطِ And the, obviously the number of people are there that the school of Imam Ahmed agrees with. وَلَا يُشْتَرَتُ لَهُمَ الطَّهَارَ So in order for there to be a correct Jumu'ah, one who's given the khutbah, must be two khutbahs, the first one he must, first one and the second one, praise Allah. Salutations upon the Prophet and in, in, in reciting at least one ayah, at least one verse of the Quran. Obviously, if the number, if you agree with the number being 40, that must be the case. Also, it is not a condition that whoever gives the khutbah, that it, whoever gives the khutbah, that they are in a state of purification. It's not a condition. It's not a condition for the khatib to be in a state of wudu or purification when they give the khutbah. Now it is a condition for the one that is leading the salah. But it is not a condition for the one that is giving the khutbah to be in the state of wudu. وَلَا أَنْ يَتَوَلَّاهُمَا مَنْ يَتَوَلَّاءَ الصَّلَاةِ And it's not a condition for the one who leads the khutbah, who gives the khutbah. It's not a condition that he also leads the salah. Once again, it is not a condition for the one who gives the khutbah that he must also lead the salah for Salatul Jumu'ah. It is not a condition in order for the Jumu'ah to be correct that the one who gives the khutbah on Yomu Jumu'ah that they may also they must also lead the prayer. This is not this is not uh, obligatory. It's not necessary. Wa min sunnihima an yaktuba ala minba. So now we're going to mention some of the sunan for Yawm al-Jum'ah, the day of Jum'ah. So from the sunnah, some of the sunan for Yawm al-Jum'ah is that you give the khutbah ala minbar. That they must, that the khutbah should be on a minbar. Huh? A minbar. 
لِفَلِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَهُوَ الْإِعْتِفَاءِ And this is due to the action of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that the minbar was something that is raised. Raised. O Mawdi'in Island. If you don't have a minbar, then some place that is raised above the ground, a place that is high. وَيُسَلِّمُ عَلَى مَأْمُومِينَ إِذَا أَقْبَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ That the one who is given the khutbah, it is for sunnah, that he gives salams to the people. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is from the sunnah, that you give the salams. ثُمَّ يَجْلِسُ إِلَى فَرَاقَ الْأَذَامِ And then he sits down, this is also from the sunnah, that he sits down while the mu'adhan calls the adhan until he finishes. وَيَجْلِسُ بَيْنَ الْخُطْبَتَيْنِ It is also from the sunnah that he sits down between the two khutbas. Between the two khutbas, he should sit down. وَيَخْتُبَ قَائِمًا وَيَعْتَمِدَ عَلَى سَيْفٍ وَخَوْسٍ وَعَصَىٰهِ And that is also uh, from the sunnah of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam that the person gives the khutbah standing up. It is sunnah to give the khutbah standing up وَيَعْتَمِدُ عَلَى السَّيْفِ And while he's giving the khutbah he shall lean on a sword or a stick or a rod. This is also from the son of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. If he gave the khutbah, he will have a stick, he will lean on it. And inshallah ta'ala, we should get a stick here. Something that's easy. Huh? Certain sunan are very easy to do, we should do it. Other ones may be more difficult. But if it's something that's easy, we need to do it. Inshallah, if our niya is correct, we will get we will get reward for it. Bi'ithni lahi ta'ala. Tayyip. وَيَقْصِدُوا تِلْقَى وَجْهِهِ And when the, when the Imam is giving the salat or leading the khutbah or giving the khutbah, his face should be face forward. He should not be looking around, rather he should be looking forward. وَيَقْصُرَ الْخُطْبَةِ وَيَدْعُوا الْمُسْلِمِينَ And that the khutbah should not be long. Sometimes, unfortunately, here in the U.S., we find brothers that give the khutbah for an hour. A whole hour and a salat be 30 minutes, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, well, yeah, not 30 seconds. Maybe two minutes. Two minutes salat and 30 minute, or I'm sorry, two minutes salat and an hour long khutbah. When the Prophet ﷺ, he said, That we should shorten the salat. Well, I'm sorry, we should shorten the khutbah. فَأَطِيلُوا الصَّلَاةِ And that we should make the salat long. وَأَقْصُرُوا الْخُطْبَةِ And we should shorten the khutbah. This hadith was reported in, in Muslim. وَيَدْعُوا الْمُسْلِمِينَ And that it is important that we make dua on Jumu'ah for the Muslims. As you hear, as many of the ulama, at the end of their khutbah, they will say, Allahumma أَعِزَّ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ O oh Allah, honor Islam and honor the Muslims. Huh? And this is something that is uh, considered to be from the Sunnah that we make dua for the Muslims. For the Muslims, we are giving the Eid khutbah, inshallah. Or not the Eid, but the Jumu'ah khutbah. Any questions, inshallah? We're going to stop right there. And we're going to, next week, inshallah, we will finish up Salat al Jumu'ah because there's some more to it now. Tafadl. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say the law. The khutbah to No, it's not a condition. So let's 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 clarify this. The khutbah to is not a condition to recite during Salatul Jumu'ah. In fact, you'll find many of many scholars that people here are familiar with, like Sheikh Salaf Hussein and others. Many of them don't even say khutbah to Never. I'm not going to say never, but rarely. Huh? You rarely find. It's not that khutbah to Hajj here, people have made it obligatory in the Salat, in Salat al Jumma, but it's not obligatory. Rather, it's something that is, is, is done, but it's not obligatory. Huh? What is obligatory when a person gives the khutbah is Alhamdulillah. What, what else? His salutations upon the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, wa qiraat al ayah, and reading an ayah, reading an ayah in both khutbahs. Obviously, you want to do more than that, but these, these are the things that are obligatory for the khutbah. Huh? These are things that are obligatory. I remember 
I gave a khutbah one time and I didn't do khutbah to Hajj. And I saw a brother looking at me strange. I said, see, I told you he wasn't on it. Huh? Allah mustan. Khalas. We're gonna stop with that. <laughs> We're gonna stop with that, inshallah. Any other questions? Huh? Tayyib. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.